Good morning from Abington, Massachusetts on this unseasonably warm February day. And this is the Orphan Car Garage YouTube channel. Today we have a very special Corvair for you. This is a 1966 Chevrolet Corvair Corsa Turbo Convertible. Extremely rare vehicle extremely rare 1966 was the last year you could get a turbo option on the corvair they built about 3100 3142 i believe turbo courses in total for 1966 and it's believed that they built around 600 or 650 convertibles of those 3142 cars 600 to 650 of them were convertibles that's it making this one of the rarest corvairs that were ever produced sort of the holy grail of Corvairs for many collectors. And here we have for you a very nice example. This car not only is a 180 horsepower turbocharged factory Corsa convertible, but it's also very well equipped. You probably noticed already if you're an aficionado of Corvairs that it has the very rare factory headrests. Extremely rare. I've been following Corvairs for decades and I've only seen a handful of these cars with these factory headrests. This car has the factory headrests in place also the vehicle has the wooden teak steering wheel which is in excellent condition just a couple of cracks that are minor has a, had from the factory a remote control outside rear view mirror which unfortunately is missing now the original head disappeared somewhere along the way but the control is still there and the rpo code is on the tag to show that the car had the comfort and convenience group which also includes i believe the day night mirror and some interior lighting also, you've noticed that uh, the car has seatbelts, front and rear. Not only does it have seatbelts, but it has premium seatbelts with retractors. Both front and rear have the retractors. And that code is also on the data plate in the engine compartment, showing that the car was equipped from day one with the premium seatbelt option with retractors, front and rear. Very unusual. We also believe this car has quick steering arms. We're not 100% positive. Um, we didn't measure them, but they appear to be quick steering arms from the factory. This car, again, adding to its rarity, is a rare color. I did some research on it. I wasn't aware of it myself. From the code, this car came from the factory as a color called Chateau Slate. Chateau Slate was only available in 1966, much like the color Aztec Bronze. Chateau Slate was only available for 1966, making this a very, very interesting and rare automobile. The gentleman that we're consigning this car for purchased it in 1972 and owned it and still owns it. It's titled in his name. We have the 1972 Massachusetts title that will go along with the car. And he only used it as a toy, a weekend cruiser. Took the kids out, his wife out, joined Corsa and the uh, local Corvair clubs and did many events with this car throughout the 70s and 80s. Um, kids got grown, life changes. The car sat for a while in his garage. Um, last time this car was registered in Massachusetts was 2009. So the car had sat from 2009 to just a few months ago and he asked us to help him resurrect the car and sell it for him. So that's what we did. We got the car up and running, driving. The brakes have all been replaced. New fuel sending unit. Carburetor was cleaned out. Alternator was replaced. Things like that. The car is a turnkey running condition. That doesn't mean that the car still doesn't need some attention, however. Whoever's going to buy this car is probably going to want to go through it and probably do a nice sympathetic restoration on it because this car deserves that. As you can see, the paint is rather dull. This is not the original paint. This is actually the third coat of paint. Um, he believes, if he remembers correctly, this car was painted in the early 1980s and he picked out a Corvette silver. So this isn't actually Chateau Slate, although it looks pretty close to it. Uh, also, in our analysis of the car, we were able to discover that at one point, this car was blue. Um, let me see if we can find it here for you. Some blue in there. Chips. Um, and when we brought that up to the owner, he did recall that when he bought the vehicle in 1972, it had been painted blue by the previous owner. Uh, but our, So we've got to assume that there's three coats of paint on this car, the original Chateau Slate, the blue, whatever that is, it's sort of a marina blue, I think, and then the uh, Corvette Silver. So um, if this was my car, I would probably strip it right down to bare metal, start from scratch and 
painted that original rare Chateau Slate. Overall, the car is very, very, very solid. I have pictures of the floor pans, which are immaculate. The floor pans in this car are amazing, especially considering it's a New England vehicle, but it was never really driven too much in the winter. Maybe it's early years, but not too bad. You see paint's cracking, there's some surface things. Um, paint peeled off the gas door. I have lots of pictures I'll be previewing um, on my website and on eBay. Anybody that sees the vehicle here on YouTube and wants more information, I'd be happy to pass those pictures along. Get to the engine compartment, which is the meat and potatoes of this car. This has the rare 180 horsepower turbocharged engine from the factory. There's your emblem to show that. Let people know that you opted for the turbo and then that's another dead giveaway, that chrome tipped exhaust coming out of the right side, lower balance. A giveaway that you've got a turbo car. <laughs> the engine, um, as you can see, the original carburetor was replaced with a Weber Performance carburetor. It does the job. Um, if it were my car, I would revert it back to the original carburetor. This car runs fine and drives fine with this carburetor, but it's not original. And I think anybody that is going to take over this car and restore it is going to want to bring this car back to original. Um, unfortunately, the owner that had this carburetor swapped misplaced the original carburetor. So we do not have the original carburetor to go with the vehicle. But like I said, with this carburetor, the car starts and runs fine, drives fine. Um, but a purist probably may not like it. I've talked to some guys with Corvairs that love these carburetors and say they're much better than the OE. I guess it's all preference. I prefer the original, very usable. The um, common soft spot in these cars is the battery tray and it's in beautiful shape. The original drain hoses are still here and it's got the original clamps, the GM style clamps for the battery. Very interesting. Um, I'm gonna post a picture of the body tag. A lot of guys are interested in that. There's a cool oil change sticker in here from 1978 showing the car has 88,000 miles on it, 1978. I think the vehicle now has just over 90,000 miles on it. So from 1978 to 2009, this car was driven sparingly, very sparingly. We believe that 90,000 miles is original, but we cannot guarantee that the vehicle of this age. But the owner from 1972 claims that it is and I tend to believe him based on the condition of the car. So, as you can see, some personal liberties were taken over the years on this car prior to the 1972 ownership. And by that, I mean those gauges were added. They're very nice. They're vintage, properly installed. They do not operate. They seem to be disconnected. Um, I like them. I think GM should have done something like that when these cars were built. They look factory. Uh, a novice wouldn't know. They're there. Uh, also, voila, a factory AM FM radio. Factory AM FM radio still in place. Again, that wooden steering wheel. Um, oh, also, this is rather odd. Someone decided to add a rear speaker to the middle of the rear seat. Not something I would have done, but easily corrected with a replacement convertible rear seat. Sadly, too, that grill looks like it could be the factory accessory rear speaker grill, but that is not what GM intended for them to be mounted. That should be mounted in the convertible top well. Speaking of convertible tops, the convertible top in this is original. I have pictures of that raised as well. It's presentable, but probably should be replaced because as I said, it is original, so it's decades old. Here again, some personal liberties, but I actually kind of like it. The convertible top switch, the gentleman moved here. From the factory, this switch would have been mounted under here. The gentleman prior to 1972 that owned this vehicle moved the switch to here, and I actually kind of like it. I don't know why GM didn't do that, but uh, lo and behold, there it is. Looks very factory, and I actually like that upgrade. Below that, I believe, is the optional emergency brake indicator to allow let you know when the emergency brake is engaged. That red light would illuminate. Uh, that does not work but it is in place. So another cool feature that you rarely see. So all that being said, the rarity of the car, the fact that the car does need some attention, and I do have pictures of the car in detail for anyone that's seriously interested in the car. We are asking $13,900 for this car, which I believe is very reasonable. We are open 
to a reasonable offer to the right buyer. We want this car to go to someone that will appreciate it and probably restore it back to its original condition. We hope that that happens. So if you like what you see, shoot me a message or give me a call, 508-954-8090. Check out my website, orphancargarage.com. Follow me on Facebook, like this page, and see what we can do. This car won't last long. This is a very rare car and the holy grail to a lot of collectors. So be well, keep in touch, subscribe, like, comment. Give me a shout if you like the car. Thank you.